Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. And today I wanna talk about alphas and betas, okay? Why is this important? Because in general, we all kind of fall into a certain category depending on our personalities, right? Um, You know, I'm gonna define it, like everybody has their own definition of what an alpha is and what a beta is. But I'm going to just define it like this, okay? An alpha is more of a take charge person. They're the person that's more in control of what happens in the relationship. They're the outgoing. They take the initiative. They take the lead. Whereas the beta is more the laid back type of person, can take it or leave it, you know, very mellow, kind of lets the other person take the lead. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because we had a question in the group where she asked, does a type A and a type B make a good relationship? And yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. To have an alpha with a beta definitely makes a good relationship. Why is that? Because everybody knows where they're role is in that type of relationship, okay? The alpha generally takes the lead and the beta is cool with it and everything like that. When you have problems, you guys, is when you put two alphas together, okay? So when you have two alphas together, it gets very, very, you know, there's a a, a control for power. In other words, let's say you're getting together and you're going out somewhere and one person really wants to do something they want to go skydiving. And let's say you don't want to do that. You want to do something else. You just want to go to dinner. The two of you are going to go back and forth about what you're going to do that night because neither one of you is going to want to do what the other one wants to do. Okay. And if you take a beta and a beta, right? Two laid back type of people, two laid back type of people like that depending on the degree of it, okay, you know, how beta somebody is, how laid back they they are, that can mean that somebody doesn't take the initiative, all right? And then things never get together. And this happens a lot in dating. A lot in dating is a lot of women have become the alphas and the men have kicked back and become the betas. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, a lot of men are not taking the initiative because they feel like with feminism and and everything like that, the women's movement, they feel like, oh, you want equal rights and everything like that. Well, you know what? You pay for the date and you take the lead and everything like that. When in actuality, a lot of women, you know, it's how you define it, okay? When you talk about feminism, because there's different degrees of feminism, just like there's different degrees of autism. I have an autistic son and there's different degrees of autism, okay? You have nonverbal, you have, you know, low functioning, you have high functioning, and it's the same thing. And the problem is you have so many people on the spectrum, okay, in dating that, you know, you have different degrees of betas and you have different degrees of alphas, okay? Then you could have somebody who is a super alpha that everything has to be their way, okay? And this falls into place sometimes when you're dealing with a very controlling, sometimes abusive in some cases, um, you know, and, and very domineering type of person. And a lot of times these type of people may want somebody who's submissive, okay? So the whole point of this podcast is for you to understand and figure out where are you on the spectrum and what are you looking for on the spectrum? Because a lot of people are not in sync. They're not in sync. And the thing that I think a lot of men don't understand today, okay, is that there are a lot of women that do want the men to make the, you know, take the initiative in dating, okay? They want them to, you know, 
in the beginning especially, they want them to pursue them, not chase them. See, there's a difference between pursuing somebody and chasing somebody, okay? When you chase somebody, it means like, in other words, you're texting them and the person is not responding to you and you keep texting them, texting them, texting them, okay? That is somebody who's chasing. But pursuing is when, you know, you text somebody in the beginning, the person responds, you have a nice conversation, and then you may text them the next day because you're pursuing that person and the person is receptive to it and and starts talking to you, okay? But what I see a lot in dating today is that there's a lot of guys and there's been a lot of guys coached this way as well. They're telling them to kick back and, you know, let her let her come looking for you. So what they're doing is they're taking more of a beta role, okay? They're becoming more of the beta and, and the women, because a lot of them, you know, they, they're, they think that's the way to roll today. They pursue a lot of these guys. And when you do that, they, you know, they lose their value. Okay. Because, you know, it's how you view things. All right. And you have to understand something. If you, the the precedent that you set up is how it's going to flow through the relationship, okay? See, that's why a lot of guys don't understand this. And they think like, oh, you know, if they kick back, the woman will chase you or chase you or chase you. The only one that's going to chase you is somebody who's flat out desperate, okay? Because any woman that has any kind of value or any self-worth is not going to chase some dude, all right? And she's not going to want some, you know, laid back beta dude, because then she realizes that anytime she's, if she's smart, then she realized anytime she, she, she wants to, you know, get together with this guy, she's always got to be the one to make the initiative. It's like ridiculous, you guys, unless you just want to do role reversals. Okay. And you, you know, you want to be out there and you want to be making the bacon and, and he's going to stay home. And, you know, does he have kids too? You know, is he able to have kids? You see where I'm going with this? Okay. You know, every, everything in life has a role. Okay. And it, and it flows with it according to nature. All right. Now, everybody has their own idea of how they want to live and everybody's entitled to live any way they want. But the point I'm trying to make is you have to do some, you know, self-reflection of yourself and decide what kind of person am I? What kind of person am I? All right. Like I've had people look at me and say, oh, you know, you're very, um, you're very outgoing, you're very self-assured and everything like that. You're very alpha. And in some ways, yes, I'm a very outgoing, you know, I guess you could say I'm kind of an alpha type of personality, right? Um, But I was not always this way, you guys. I mean, I was always, you know, I, I never believed in injustice or anything like that. So if I saw something that I thought wasn't right, okay, yeah, I w- I'm one of those people that would speak up, definitely. It's just in my personality. But there were times that I was in relationships where the other person had the control. And a lot of times I shut my mouth and I didn't say anything. And, you know, I was taken for granted or I was not treated the right way. Believe me when I tell you, okay? Because I was trying to make the relationship work and I lost my self-worth and I lost my self-respect. And I said to myself, when I went through all these things, I said, that will never happen again, okay? That I will never put myself in a position like that again. And why did I, why did I do that? Number one, because I didn't know the type of cat I was dealing with because I was dealing with a real narcissist, you know, abusive in every way. I didn't, I didn't recognize who he was and what he was about. Okay. Cause I never dealt with anybody like that before. And the other thing is they got me at a very vulnerable time in my life. Okay. So I, I guess at that point in my life, I didn't want to be alone. I wanted to try to make it work. Plus the person was very, very passionate, very affectionate. The love bombing, when they were good, they were really good. Okay. And when they were bad, they were like the devil on wheels. Believe me when I tell you one of the worst, one of the worst. Okay. But the point I'm trying to make in all this is, 
you know, at the time, I really didn't see it for what it was. That's why when I podcast, I'm trying to, you know, kind of wake up a lot of people that don't know because they haven't had that kind of experience. I mean, some of you guys have and you know exactly what I'm talking about. And some, you know, some of the younger women or younger guys, they don't understand because they haven't lived it. And unless you've lived it, you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. But the point, the point that I'm, where I'm going with all this is that you come into your own, okay? And you start to realize the older you get, the wiser you get, and you start to see things for what they really are because you have the experience. You have the experience in dealing with people in your everyday life. You have experience in your family. You have experience in your relationships. You have experience in your careers, okay? And the more experience you have, the more you know how to deal with people, okay? Because you could recognize it because you've seen it before. So what I'm trying to say is when you're out there and you're dating, you have to recognize when you start talking to somebody, am I dealing with an alpha type of personality or am I dealing with a beta personality? And does this work for me? Does this work for me, okay? Now, some people... You know, they don't care about having an alpha personality, all right? Maybe they want to be the one in control. There's a lot of women. There's a lot of women that are alphas that are with beta men, okay? And it works. It works for a lot of them. A lot of them are like that. And then there's some women that are, you know, alphas that get with alpha men and they knock heads, all right? So that's where I that's what I mean when I say degree, okay? In other words, are they bending? Is this person able to bend? Is this person able to make a sacrifice and say, "Okay, you know, if you really want to go there, I'll go there too." You know, or I really, you know, would rather, you know, go play golf this weekend, but if you want me to come to your family's house, I'll come to your family's house, okay? That's somebody who's bending, all right? That's not somebody who's always has to have their way and takes control of everything. So you have to decide how much do you bend and how much does that person bend? How much do you want things to be your way and how much you don't want things to be your way. Okay. Like I'll give you an example. Let's say you get involved with somebody and they're always working. All right. And they never make time for you. You have to decide, can you deal with something like that? Or are you somebody that needs somebody's attention? You need more attention from somebody. And a lot of relationships break up because of this, you guys, because there's a lot of women that get involved with, you know, men or whoever they get involved with. And that person just can't give them the time that they need in the relationship and the relationship breaks down. Now, you have to always make your partner a priority. Okay, you have to understand that it's like years ago. Like when I was going to date this guy, he was a doctor. And my father said to me, you know, it's not all peaches and cream when you get involved with a doctor because they're always on call. Okay. You have to know what kind of lifestyle you want to live. Okay. Is this person able to, you know, give you what you need in the relationship. Now, some people can swing with it and they're okay. And they, you know, they got their own thing going and they're busy in their own life. And if they don't see that person as much, that's okay. Okay. And there's other people that need more attention. Now, when we talk about alphas and betas, you guys, here's the thing. You, like I I tell you guys all the time, the way you listen to podcasts A lot of other people listen to podcasts and they get a lot of information that, you know, can be detrimental to them and to you as well. So if they're being coached and they're being told, um, you know, you let the other person take the lead and everything like that, you're dealing with somebody who basically is misguided or can't think for themselves, okay? That they think that, you know, maybe being an alpha is, you know, having somebody, in a sense, kiss their ass and pursue them and chase them. That is not somebody that you want. That also shows a sign of insecurity, okay? And the last thing you want to do is get involved with an insecure person, okay? Because an insecure person is going to, you know, they're going to 
they're going to feel inferior to you and it, and they're going a lot of times not all the time but a lot of times they're going to try to cut you down okay so that's why i always tell you anytime you see signs of an insecure person you better be careful with that person okay because a lot of insecure people are jealous but getting back to what i wanted to say with alphas and betas the thing is this you want somebody that makes an effort that puts work into something Okay, and you have a lot of false alphas out there. Why are they a false alpha? Because they're trying to be, let's for for instance, they're trying to be an alpha male, but yet they don't want to, you know, take the initiative. They don't want to contact you on a regular basis or something like that. Now, I'm not saying that you um, kick back and you let somebody chase you, okay, because you have to put work in too. But in the beginning, in the beginning, these people, you know, they have to show you that they're interested because if they're not showing you interest in the beginning, what do you think it's going to get better later on once they get comfortable in it, the relationship, once things start to get boring and it's not new and exciting? So that's why their level of interest in the beginning has to be the highest. That's when you're going to see the best in someone in the very beginning when you are something new to them, when you are like, you have, you have no, you know, negative marks on you, so to speak, when they look at you. Because generally, when you first start talking to somebody, when you first see them, you're attracted to them, you're looking at them, and you're attracted to them physically, okay? And then when the conversation comes into play, that's when things could either swing left or swing right, okay? And that depends on what comes out of your mouth and if they agree with it. So, you know, if you find that this person is not making the effort, they're not vibing with you or they're just a very lazy person that wants somebody to do all the work and and basically kiss their ass, okay? And that's that's the problem today too. A lot of people have been hurt, so a lot of people have a wall up and they figure, you know what? I'm not bending over backwards for you. You have to show me what you've got. You have to show me that you're really interested in me. And if you don't, I'm just not going to bother with you. And that's why a lot of women, they cut a dude very quickly, okay? And there's other women that, you know, sit there and they hang on it and hope for things to change. And they find the hard way as time goes on that it doesn't change usually for the better. It usually changes for the worst because, you know, they're not working with much. So this is why I tell you guys, okay, you know, recognize what type of person you are. Are you okay with taking the initiative or would you, are you the type of person that, you know, has more traditional values and feel like, you know what, if you're a female, you want the male to take the initiative. If that's the case, then you have to find somebody who understands that and stay away from these people that have been brainwashed to to expect you to chase after them, okay? And that's what's going on today. But see, somebody, somebody who's really woke and somebody who really knows what it is and understands knows that in order to connect with that person, they have to make the initiative as a man, all right? So, I mean, if they're looking for somebody to pursue them, then let them be with somebody else, okay? And that person who's going to pursue them is not going to end up in a good place because they're always going to be the one begging and pleading to have that person's attention and have that person vibe with them. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is this, if you're the type of person, let's say you're kind of like an alpha female, which means you have no problem, you know, taking charge and everything like that, but you also want somebody who puts effort in as well, okay, you have to look for somebody that is alpha, that can take the initiative and everything like that, but yet but yet can be a little bit beta in the sense that they could be laid back and they could bend with things as well, okay? Not an alpha 
where it's got to be their way and that's it. And if you don't, you know, march to the beat of the drum, you're cut, you're deleted, you're blocked, okay? Because if you're dealing with somebody who is that stern, if you don't, you know, bow down to them, could you imagine being married to somebody? That kind of person would make your life miserable, miserable, okay? So the thing is this, you kind of want to look for a little bit of a balance in a person. And and you don't want somebody that's super alpha and you don't want somebody that's super beta. You want somebody that kind of can move with the flow of things and that can connect with you the way you think things should move, okay? And that, you know, if you're the type of person you want to move forward, you want to vibe with the person... You want somebody, you know, that can plan a date, that can follow through on a date, that will follow up and call you and not play games after the date and not wait four days to call you because they've been coached that don't contact her right away or something like that, okay? Because somebody who is a straightforward, straight shooter is not going to put up with that if they're smart, okay? That's why I tell you guys, don't play those type of games. If somebody is being straight, and you know they're being transparent and they're being genuine with you then you give that person the same type of respect back when you're dealing with somebody who's not doing that that is playing those games okay that is trying to kind of bring you down to your knees by not showing you attention or doesn't want to show you how much they like you or something like that okay what do you think's going to happen later on what do you think is going to happen later on when they feel that they've got you? What do you think? You think they're going to want you more? No. No. Okay? So you need somebody who could be a little bit humble. All right? Somebody who's humble. Very important, you guys. I need to do a podcast just on this. Because the, the problem today in dating is so much arrogance. So much arrogance, and it goes both ways. Okay, it's not just men. You same thing with women too. You got you have a lot of hurt women out there that have a chip on their shoulder as well. Okay, but the thing is, each person is individual. So no matter how much you've been hurt in your past, and we've all been hurt. Okay, if you've lived long enough, you've had experience, and along the way, somebody you know crossed your boundaries, or you know, kind of may have hurt you in some way, but moving forward, you have to say to yourself, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are dating that aren't, you know, aren't, that I'm not vibing with, that aren't putting the work in, but there are us also people that really do want to meet somebody. They're the minority, okay? And that's why it's so hard to connect, Okay, so but you have to keep an open mind because if you don't keep an open mind, you're going to miss that person. So you have to be aware of, you know, it's not about how good looking they are or how sexy they are or how much money they make or, you know, what they could do for you financially or anything like that. It's about how they treat you. And it's about, you know, if they're trying to work with you and, and you know, if they're showing you the initiative you show that you're interested back without coming off thirsty, okay? You know, people have to earn you. And the only way they earn you, it takes time. It takes months. It takes years to earn somebody, okay? To where you could fully, you know, kind of open yourself up and really know that person. Because there's people that have dated people, believe me, you guys, you know, for years, even got married and they, they don't know that person completely. So you want somebody who could be transparent, and somebody who doesn't mind being a little humble, okay? So when you get involved with somebody, for instance, that could be a super al- alpha type of person and, you know, doesn't know how to be a humble person, doesn't know how to humble themselves to kind of like bend a little bit, you're going to have a problem with that person unless you always want to be submissive and you always want to live according to how they want you to live, all right. So the point is, know yourself, 
know how you view a relationship. You should, you know, it even helps you guys to write it down on a piece of paper. This is what I expect in a relationship. I expect a guy to call me every day. I expect a guy to get on the phone with me and it could go the other way as well. You know, what do you, what are your expectations? And then as you date these people, this is how you recognize the red flags. Because if you don't have it on paper in black and white, you miss the red flags, okay? Or you make excuses and you say to yourself, well, you know, uh, I've been talking to this person for a couple of weeks and they never made plans to see me or anything like that. You know, maybe they really are busy in their work. They have a very demanding job. No, no, those are excuses. If somebody is texting you for weeks and hasn't made plans to see you, guess what? Nine times out of 10, they have somebody already. Okay, or, you know, or if they don't have somebody that they're in a relationship with, they have a main squeeze that they're seeing. Okay, and they're keeping you on the sidelines. So don't be a sucker. All right. You got to you got to progress with something. So that means that if they're not progressing towards something, you don't bother with that person because that person is going to waste your time. All right. Believe me when I tell you, it's so true. You want progression. And so what does that take? That takes somebody who wants the same things as you. What do you hear in dating? You hear that they want the same things as you. But you know what? It's words. It's not actions, okay? And a lot of people lie. And they lie for a benefit that they're going to try to get out of you. Money, sex, ego boosting, you know, don't forget the ego boosting, you guys, because a lot of these people, they'll keep you around for their fucking ego, okay? And what does that mean? That means that they like to talk to you during the week when they have nothing going on and they're hitting your inbox and they're wasting your time when you could be spending it on your children, you could be spending it on your work hustle, you could be spending it uh, painting your house or fixing your house or going for a walk. You're giving these people your time okay but yet they're not progressing with it okay they're not progressing with it so you have to recognize that okay and you know it doesn't matter what do I always say the time it doesn't matter what comes out of their mouth why because people talk shit all right believe me it took me a long time to realize this (laughs) because I used to when I was you know er, in my earlier dating phases you know I used to think like everybody was as honest as I was or was a straightforward shooter and it'd be like well why did they do that this and that and everything like that and a lot of my male friends they would sit there and they would giggle and they would laugh because they knew it was a game they knew it was a game and a lot of the women didn't realize that it is a game, okay? That they are keeping you around for some kind of reason. And one of the reasons that we always forget about is ego, you guys, ego. They love when you blow up their phone. They love having their their phone, they have multiple women texting them back. They're texting you good morning and they're texting 35 other women good morning, okay? So, you know, you have to see if it's not progressing, you're dealing with a a lemon. You're dealing with somebody that is not worth your time, okay? And never give your time to somebody that is not showing you something, all right? But this podcast was about alphas and betas. And the main concept is to know yourself and know how you want to progress in a relationship. And when you start dating and you start talking to somebody... Say to yourself, am I dealing with an alpha or am I dealing with a beta? Am I dealing with somebody who's been coached because they're telling me things that I've heard other coaches tell people to tell? Like, you know, you you have some of these people, they think they're smooth and they'll say something to you like, tell me about you. You know, I want to know all about you. Okay. It's just, it comes off, you know, inauthentic and fake. Okay, if somebody wants to know about you, they're going to be curious and they're going to ask you certain questions about yourself, not just, I want to know everything about you. Tell me everything that that is so fake, you guys. And that's I had somebody do that with me one time and I, I it just didn't feel right in my gut and my gut was right. And I was dealing with a nine dollar bill. What's a nine dollar bill? A fake. He was a fake. Okay. And he was somebody who expected me to pursue him and contact him and kiss his ass. And that wasn't happening. All right. Because that's not how I roll. All right. I wasn't going to deal with some 
somebody that was expecting me to be the mascalina, okay? Because I knew where that would take me. And I knew that if I started that precedent of always having to be the one to initiate, that this person eventually was going to start to lose respect for me and was going to start to take me for granted. And it was going to be one of those kind of toxic kind of things where the person was going to like kind of withdraw their affection to try to get you to be begging for them, begging for them. And why? Because this person was a narcissist and they wanted their ego fed. So this is what I'm telling you, okay? If somebody can't humble themselves, if somebody can't take the initiative and then they proclaim to be an alpha male or something like that, guess what? That's not an alpha male, all right? That's that's somebody who's a feminine man who is trying to be an alpha male and, you know, is is just a flat out loser. OK, <laughs> that's just a flat out loser. OK, and it's not that I am looking for anybody to kiss my ass or anything like that, because I will show you the same amount of energy that you show me. OK, because I understand it goes both ways, but I do believe in basic principles, okay, and the ways that, you know, things are supposed to roll as far as my beliefs, okay, in a relationship. And in the beginning, in the beginning, we're not talking after you've been going out a while, but in the beginning, I I feel that a man should take the initiative, okay? I really do. And that you show the same energy back to them when they do show you the initiative. And that's signaling to them that you are interested in them. Okay. And, and there's a lot of controversy on this where a lot of, you know, uh, modern dating people and stuff will say, no, you know, you take the initiative. You know, this isn't the early years of, you know, we are not back in the 1950s. You know, it's okay for a woman to take initiative and everything like that. Well, let me ask you something. How's it working out for all of you out there that, that are taking the initiative? Are you doing better? Most of you aren't, okay? I'm just going to say it like it is. And whoever doesn't like it, that's too bad because it happens to be a fact. And that's why the dating world is a mess. Because a lot of women have taken initiative and have kissed the asses of these guys. And that's why these guys are kicking back and they're not giving you relationships because you're giving too much. You're doing the friends with benefits. You're allowing situationships. So why, why do they need to nail it down? Why do they need to put a ring on your finger? They're getting everything easy and free, okay? And you're allowing it. And you're allowing it. So don't sit here and come back at me and say, oh, well, this is the way it is and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's fine. Then I guess you want to be single the rest of your life. Okay. Or I guess maybe you want to have a kid and not have a, a parent there that's there and committed to that kid and, 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 and supporting, you, you know, you, you know, being there emotionally for you and that child because they don't have to commit to that. Okay. And that's why you have a lot of, you know, you have situations too, where you have a lot of single parents where the other person is not committed to them and everything like that, okay? It affects the children as well. It affects the children because now they don't have two parents in their life, all right? Because you move too fast, all right? You had the kid before you had the commitment, but, you know, it's it's how, you know, the decisions you make are going to shape your life, you guys, and there's nothing wrong with that either, okay? As long as you are able to handle it, as long if if you are okay with that. But but the point I'm trying to make in all of this is that know yourself and know what type of person you want to be with. And when you start to see the signs that somebody is not, you know, up to par or whatever, or they're not, you know, their views on dating are different than yours. You got to just X that person off, X them off. Okay. You're not going to sit there and argue with them or try to change their mind or anything like that, because they're most of the time they're set in their ways and how they feel. And you just have to find the people that believe in what you believe in. Okay. And I hope that helps you. If it does hit the subscribe button, share, have a great day. Thank you. 
Hi, you guys. I just want to make you aware that the Game Exposed podcast now has their merchandise available. You can check out the link in the podcast description. There's hoodies, there's sweatpants, there's t-shirts, there's cool hats. So go check it out. Link is in the podcast description. And follow Yaz on Instagram at dating underscore advice underscore Yaz. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. (music) 